I didn't know I had this guitar. You know what it is? It's, it's not hard to tell. Steve I, uh, Jim. I'm, I'm working on this a lot. I found this guitar. This is, I'm like, oh, what a cool, you know. It's almost like, uh, I don't know who else does this. <laughs> Somebody. But it goes up so you can, you know, around your strap and... But when you're not strapped, this thing is a pain in the ass. It's still cool. I love the gems. The gems are the top fuel dragsters of guitars. You need to shred your friggin' face off or it's not going to sound right. Or you need to do spaced out bluesy craziness. There's your choices. <laughs> So let's start with both. I don't know. I'll just do a little and uh, won't go too far into it. But this is basically, you know, gem. It's not a. It's not a. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I gotta always say it isn't a copy from China. You know, it's so stupid. This is made in Japan, but it says Michael D on the back. I have it so I can see the serial number. Because I write down all my serial numbers. All guitars. Because that one guy that got his guitars ripped off, that's what saved his butt. He had knew the serial numbers. But I got little things. like These have been carved a little deeper, which I thought would be cool. But you just break the strings. <laughs> a kill switch here. But it These K 
kill switches suck. I was going to show them to you because I had one more. I was going to put in. Oh, here it is. These. They light up. You blue, and it, and it seems like a good idea at the time, but it isn't. <laughs> it, they suck. They wear out in like a couple of months, and then you're like crackling. And my best still is the little mini toggle. Just beep, dang, brrr, you can do all that, or put a toggle in there. I think I might have to just the toggle put it back in there because this is when I was trying to start something but then everybody started doing it and that buckethead guy had two of them what are you supposed to do <laughs> it's not even working <laughs> So I thought this guitar was in Utah, and it turns out it was on top of a stack of guitars, well it was, and it had fallen back. It was in a case, it was in a hard shell case, but it, it had been jammed in that, between the wall and these guitars and basses that I have behind this stack of guitars that I have standing up, right? And then the rest are kind of just the gig bag ones are just in a giant pile. That's just a little bit of them. So, uh, I saw this and I'm like, holy crap, I hope it still plays. I hope it's not broken. No, as you can see, it, it plays, but man, does it go out of tune easy. That's probably because the dang strings are old. I mean, up here, it's that rough, you know, it's like, oh feels like wire but 
I don't know. I don't know. Someone wanted me to play Megadeth on the bitch, the B-series bitch. And I gave told a quick story that I was in Megadeth in 1984 for a while. My band was looking for a singer. Yeah, we were glam. We were trying to be Hanoi Rocks, but heavier. I was actually on guitar. I switched to bass. So the other guy was on guitar. He no fault. His guitar writing sucked, but his his uh, he was cool and he looked good. And we took that and we had a drummer. The drummer was just like a surfer dude. He just would grow his hair like the hair, and he just wouldn't do anything with it. Drive me nuts. Well, I had my hair all. I looked like Mike Monroe, and he looked like, you know, Vince Neil on a normal day. But it was bugging me, so we got another guitar player, and I went to bass, and then we started auditioning singers. And this guy calls us over, and he says, "Don't bring, just bring your guitars. I got Marshall stacks, drums, and amp pegs." I'm like, well, "Who is this guy? He's got to be loaded." Walk in, and I'm like, "Oh no, it's that guitar player from." Uh, Metallica, the loser guy, they got kicked out. I mean, if you kicked out on Metallica, but there was Marshalls, Ampegs, and whatever kind of drum set. And we sat there and we went through my songs, which were four, and then we went into their songs that they kind of wrote together, the guitar player. They, he didn't like them at all. He stopped and write one and a half. He liked my songs, but he, he said, you know, can we speed them up and we can do, do this and do that? I'm like, I'd love to. So he was really pushing the drummer to, and I'm like, holy crap, I like this because he was a great guitar player, Dave Mustaine. So I'm like, I go over to him, I'm like, they're not going to want to do this. They're not into it. I'm into it. He goes, yeah, but dude, you look like a chick and you're not even in a plane. I go, well, this is what I look like, but I can... I can dump as long as I get long hair and wear leather I'm pretty cool maybe a little eyeliner but I don't care I don't have to have my hair all puffy he's like that's cool eyeliner is cool I'm like okay we talked about it and then he was looking for a singer could not find a singer he got a record deal everything was going and I then he sang and we started rehearsing with him and I'm like nope can't do it. Not that voice. It's never going to make it. Shows you what I know. So, I could have been in Megadeth, and I blew it. I was going to be a bass player. He liked, I'm trying to remember the one song he liked.
something like that, but it didn't sound right. Hey. 